Episode number 29, Inside Bowling Show. I'm Mike. Matt's with you again today. Today, our guest on the show is going to be Bill O'Neill. We really didn't do any show prep for this one at all, Matt, because we have such a relationship with Bill. And uh, we're just going to pretty much talk to Bill about whatever he wants to talk about today because this is uh, his 721st uh, bowling show. I think he's done, uh, he said on Twitter today, I think is was the number that he said. Yeah, some, something around that. He's pretty big time, so he's probably just been living on his laptop, living on StreamYard, living on Zoom lately, um, and I'm sure he's pretty sick of it, so I'm glad that we got him back on today to get him to do something else he doesn't like. Yeah, and I mean, we have a lot of bowling topics to get to today with him um, that are pretty fresh. You know, he's going to be part of these uh, these shows that are coming up here uh, on Fox and on FS1. He's going to be included in those, so that's cool. Uh, so we'll talk to him about that. Um and we'll talk to him about the, the league draft, uh, all of the comments that he had about folks, and we'll see who else he can roast here today on the show, so to speak. Uh, and, uh, you know, I asked him as well, you know, can I get, you know, the breadwinner of the family, Gavin, on the show today? So I think we're even going to have his son, Gavin, on the show, and we're going to talk some NBA. That's why I wore my jazz basketball shirt today. I'm anxious to see what Gavin has to say about what he thinks about the jazz's chances when the NBA resumes and um, their chances against the Philadelphia 76ers. So I'm sure he's going to come out pretty heavily on, in the Jazz favor today. So hopefully we can get some hot takes from Gavin. He's a big basketball fan. And maybe we'll even talk a little bowling with him as well. Uh, give give Bill a, a little bit of a break, you know, from all these shows he's got to do. Yeah, um, I'm probably just going to dip out during that portion of the show where we talk basketball because um, I actually was thinking of poll questions for today, Mike, and I was going to set an over under on how many times Bill roasts me for being a New York Knicks fan. But I figured that there was, it was just the number was going to be way too high um, to make your, a realistic poll question. So uh, I figured that um, then when you told me that Gavin's coming on the air to talk Sixers, and I, I know that that boy knows his basketball info. So I'm just going to leave that to you guys. I'm just going to probably dip on out and not have anything, have anything to say. So we'll have that coming up about, about 30 after the hour. Um, so let's get to our Bowler X poll question, uh, Matt, from yesterday. Uh, we had a big show yesterday, and it followed up with a follow-up uh, bonus episode also yesterday afternoon. So big day for us on Inside Bowling. But here was our Bowler X poll question from yesterday. In the next PWBA Tour season, which of these PWBA bowlers will win the most titles, Verity, Diana, or Daria? And Diana won at 46.6%. Uh, really close second and third Verity at 27.3% and Daria coming in at 26.1% after yesterday's program. So, uh, good show yesterday, boy, we had some, uh, very interesting, uh, talking points on the show yesterday. Got myself in hot water there a little bit or misunderstood, but you uh, sure did. You sure did. But Mike. It was, uh, you know, man, uh, I don't know if we're going to have three strong personalities on ever again, because I, I gotta be on my game. And uh, maybe I, maybe I wasn't, but uh, if you can go back and listen to that program, it was a good one yesterday, and we had a lot of positive feedback, and and the girls really enjoyed it as well. Diana, even after the show, said we appreciate the tough questions. You're very direct. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing about Mike Flanagan that everybody knows at one point or another is that Mike ain't call, scared to call a spade a spade and tell you how it is. Yeah, exactly. So uh, today's Bowler X poll question, uh, I think it's a good one. What do you got for us, Matt, today? So today's Bowler X poll question is related to the new PBA news that was released yesterday in relation to the three events that will be put on. Um, so my question is, is who will win the upcoming PBA strike derby? And we paired people together because Twitter only gives you four options. So we, there's eight players. We, we pair them together. So who do you think is going to win? Tackett Maldonado, Jones Prather, 
Bill O'Neill, Kyle Troop, or Anthony Simonson slash Sean Rash. So go ahead on over to our Inside Bowling Twitter page and partake in today's poll and let us know who you think is going to win the strike derby. Cool. Thanks. Uh, that's a good one. I can't wait to see the results on that. Also, uh, if you've been following along with the show this week, uh, we are asking for input on what we should do after episode number 24. we got 11, 11 episodes left, and we'll see if we want to continue doing the show or not, or if this was just a quarantine thing. But uh, we definitely would like to uh, get your opinion, and you can send us an email at media at insidebowling.com, media at insidebowling.com. And if you have any thoughts about the program or, or just any uh, – general things you want to send over we'll certainly uh, appreciate and take it to heart we've had quite a few people write in and tell us what we should do and also just give us some uh, suggestions and things for the show because uh, we're amateurs uh, that's for sure but we do it every day so speak for yourself mike i'm a professional in here yeah that is true all those medals back there i think pretty much let everybody know yeah you, you have to bring it i got i had a low-key feeling too bill's gonna roast me for that as well Oh yeah, but, talking to me in the pre-show as you were uh, running late for today's oh, show. I know it's I know it's going to happen, but hey, it's all in good fun, and I can't wait to talk with big old Billy. Also, I don't uh, big old Billy boy. That'll be that you just set yourself up there. <laughs> big old Billy, he's been losing weight, man. He's been losing. Uh, uh, when in doubt, I can pull up that that picture, Bill. He's oh, sitting boy. in the set area. Don't oh, you worry. Oh boy, I see him backstage. We're gonna bring him in in just a second. This is also a reminder that if you want to support the program, you can uh, do several different things. You can share our broadcast. You can retweet things or like things or whatever you like to do. You can also head over to Inside Bowling and check out our merch. You can save fifteen percent with coupon code IB show and the store has been killing it lately. You guys have been supporting the show very much and uh, we see that. And that means might keep the show going when people are supporting the show like that. So I guess, uh, I guess it's time to bring in our guest today. Um, how do I want to intro this guy? I don't know. I don't really want to go over accolades because we all know he's a great bowler. Maybe we should let him intro himself. You know what? Bring That's him a good in. idea. Bring like him in and say, Hey Bill, Can what's up? Yeah, it's this is the 781st show he's done, so we'll bring him in. Um, and we'll, yeah, we're gonna let him intro himself. So, sounds good. Yeah, let's bring him in and he can just go ahead and introduce himself. Hi, today on the show, we welcome the Kevin Hart of bowling. It's funny, and he's overexposed. Here's Bill O'Neill. What a stellar, what a st now, see, Mike, now we know that if we're ever going to intro Bill for something serious, that's how he wants to be known. I'll take it. Have you worn out that chair yet? I mean, are, are your butt <laughs> cheeks completely sunken in uh, from sitting there in the same exact spot every day on the 720 shows you've done so far? Uh, yes, and uh, I probably should switch the chairs around a little bit. And I, ca I can't really do shows in different parts of the house because this is the only place where I can get quiet is in my is in my basement. So um, you might even be able to hear the, the ramblings of upstairs right now. Just the kids running around all day. It sounds like a, it sounds like they just constantly are dropping things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I would have known this ahead of time, you know, that area right above your head there where it looks like maybe there's like an air duct in your in your in your basement up there, you've got some really good advertising opportunity up there, some oh. good space. You're right there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That and that is there's that is a that that's actually not the air duct, but yes, it's close enough. Some sort of support structure or beam in the basement there, looks like. Um, yeah, the, the duct is uh, enclosed above my head. That is, uh, I believe, all of the um, like water lines. They're in, oh, in, in that. Nice. So, um, how much would you charge inside bowling for a sign somewhere up in that area? Well, you missed the boat, I think, because I think I'm all out of interviews. So if we would have done this before I did, you know, the draft and before I did, the, you know, the stuff with the PBA with Coley. You know, it might have been, you know, five grand maybe. Uh, yeah, that's, that was the number I had in mind. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I mean, it would have been a little bit cheaper if I could have used, like, you know, painter's tape so I didn't have to, like, do any damage to my wall hanging the sign up. So maybe, maybe I dropped it to, like, 4500 Yeah, maybe command strips. I could have sent you some command strips. Those work well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, missed opportunity today. You could, have, you could have flown out here, hung it up yourself, and then left. I'd probably drove from Utah with uh, the pandemic we're in. You know, makes a lot more sense. That's a great drive. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, well, we pretty much said that uh, today's show, since every question's been asked on every other show of you that has to do with anything that would be normal um, bowling questions, you know, you had two great years, um, you know, after a year where you made like every match play but couldn't make any shows, you were completely irrelevant, but probably the best bowler on tour consistently. If it was a NASCAR season from the 80s, you'd have won the Winston Cup, but uh, we won't talk about any of that stuff today because it's just totally irrelevant, doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it matters, I would say to me, oh, yeah. to me, it matters. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in my basement, which I, I paid for with those accomplishments. So yes, it does matter. <laughs> uh, but you know, we've, we've gone over this, you know, enough in enough interviews that I think, uh, you know, we can talk about, talk it all about whatever you want. Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk. Have you, did you, did you do a show yesterday? Did I do all the days are run together? And all the shows are kind of running together. So maybe I did. I don't think so, actually. Have you talked about the topic of the PBA news yesterday that we did a special show on uh, about these events that are coming up that you're a part of? No, no. You want oh, to hey. Jeez. Wow. Okay. What hey. a layup. We're going to cool. we're gonna take this, this part of it over, I guess. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to be back bowling. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so june 6th uh you got to be in florida and you're in pennsylvania how are you going to get there i'm going to fly um you know it was something that christy and i talked about and you know i wasn't really sure what i was going to do um you know there was a, a piece of me for a second that thought about not um accepting the invite uh and you know just going back and forth with everything talking to other family members trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I looked up how far of a drive it is. It's like 17 hours from my house and that's outside my wheelhouse. So I was either going to fly or I wasn't going to go. And, um, you know, I just thought about trying to wait out the pros and cons, um, you know, and just try to, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, we're going to, they're going to take all the precautions that necessary inside the bowling center. And I'm going to take all the precautions I need to, um, you know, getting there. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a risk and it's going to be a risk, um, at any point whenever we decide to travel, I don't know when, when any of this is going to slow down. And whenever you decide to do anything, there's going to, you know, there's going to be a risk and it's just about trying to mitigate, mitigate the risk as, as you go. Tom Clark told me yesterday that Sean Rash is uh, probably going to drive to the event. Um, and I was thinking maybe you could get some sort of old station wagon, and uh, load it up like a family truckster and, and take everybody down. Um, no? Yeah, see, this is how I know you don't have kids, is uh, my son is seven, my daughter's two. There is no chance that I'm driving 17 hours each way in like a three-day span uh, with, with them. There's just, it's not, it's not feasible. It's not going to happen. I would get there, and I would be totally uh, out of a, a, a solid mental state to try to perform, Um you know, we would get home and then I would, I would not want to see any of them ever. Uh, it just, no, nope. Okay. No chance. Now How, you, oh, go you, ahead. You talked about being in a mental state to perform. What is your physical state to perform going to be like? Have you been able to practice much or is, are you going to go out there and do you expect the guys to not be very sharp? Yeah, it might not be very good. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I haven't bowled in a couple months uh, and I'm going to start bowling um, next week. And I think the one good thing is that it's a strike derby. So I think, the, you know, for a lot of us, I think especially for me, the one thing that kind of goes haywire when I don't bowl for a while is spares. For sure. You know, for and sure. I kind of get kind of get goofy on the spares. And, um, you know, I have a feeling, the you know, the lane conditions might be a little bit easier for this thing. So we try to strike a lot. So I think if I can bowl for a couple weeks, you know, if I get five, six, seven practice sessions in, I, I should be – you know, I should be, you know, certainly not as sharp as I was when I left the World Series, but uh, in, in a position where I feel like I'm comfortable enough bowling on TV. And if you're going to be bowling on an easier house condition, the argument can be made. You might be better off being less sharp because everybody knows how good sh sharp bowlers that can repeat really well always struggle on a house shot. So maybe the fact if you get it going a little bit everywhere here, Bill, that might be part of your strategy. Yeah, I won't be, I won't be, uh, you know, having to move too much. There'll be no transition because I won't be hitting the same spot exactly. twice. Every, exactly. Everywhere I throw, it'll be, it'll be fresh. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. How do you even prepare for an event like this? Will you just go rapid fire at the local center? You know, I think probably I would do that the last couple of days. I would try to make sure that I'm physically sharp first, you know, bowl for, you know, a, a good bit just so I know that I can, 
when I need to, I can hit my target uh, because you don't want to just the first day I go back, I don't want to be, be throwing rapid fire because I'll certainly get myself out of time and, and, and out of rhythm. There's uh there's rumors that uh, there may potentially be some sports gambling available for this event through some of the online sports books because it is a live event. Uh, if you were to handicap this event with the eight players, which we'll let all our folks know who, who they are, Tommy Jones, Kyle Troop, Sean Rash, EJ Tackett, Chris Prather, Sean Maldonado, Anthony Simonson. And I find it interesting here that they have you listed last. Uh, but And yourself. So who would you... Uh, who would you think would be the favorite to win? Who should everybody go go put their money on? Huh. Well, without knowing the odds, see the odds determine everything. You know, you have to know who, who you know what, where the value is. Well, I'm trying to get. Uh, not that I gamble. Not that I know anything about that. But I'm, I'm just saying, to, tune in to this for you to set the odds up right here. Oh, you want me to set the odds? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I'd be like forty to one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting all my money on Bill then. Yeah. And then I would bet on myself. That's how I would do it. I if I'm it. It's hard. It's hard to really set odds because we don't ever do any of this. We don't do anything like this. So you're looking at, you probably have to look at who typically bowls faster. Um, so maybe if you're looking at it like that, maybe you, uh, maybe like say someone like Rash has a little bit higher odds because he typically, you know, gets distracted a little bit on TV and he likes to stop. Maybe that's not something that takes him out of his comfort zone. Um, Anthony might be have lower odds because he, he can bowl pretty quickly, not something that would really, really bother him. He kind of just gets up there and fires. So I guess you probably have to look something like that. Maybe, you know, yeah, because, you know, I would go with the lower odds probably would be with the with the two handed guys, I would think, because Anthony and Kyle can 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 strike a lot where like, say, me and like Prather and Sean would be more of like the tactician type type player. So maybe you maybe you would uh, maybe you would go with the. Go with the uh, strike machines, you know, EJ and Simonson and and Kyle. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you you can do pretty good though. You, you don't necessarily have to stop every time. I've seen you just kind of gun and go before. You, I think you got a good shot at this. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm I'm trying to bring myself down so the odds come down, and then I can bet mm-hmm. on myself. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna Pete Rose. What would what would you do bowling? ball wise in a, in an event like that do you bring like two or three of like your favorite ball and just make sure you have the same ball same drilling and just have at it or you would probably want to bring you i think if if it's set up in a way that you're that we're on a pair and we're going we can go lane to lane and it's not on one lane then i think you would need to have two balls that you're comfortable with and you know we use interchangeable thumbs so for me like i need you know, a, a couple of the, of the vice it's in my, in each ball. So I'm not waiting for the ball to come back and switch it out. Cause you're trying to save as much time as possible. So yeah, I think you definitely need, you definitely need two balls. You know, they don't necessarily have to be the same ball with the same drill. Cause if the lanes are, if the lanes are easy, you can, you can get lined up and you can kind of strike with, with balls that are in the same, the same boat. And uh, you know, you can kind of stand in a similar spot and throw it a similar speed and, you know, do it that way. Yeah, so June sixth, you're going to go to this event. It's in Jupiter, Florida. What day will you fly out? I'm flying out the fifth and coming home the seventh. In and out. Okay, and then the next weekend, uh, looks like uh, same center uh, on the, on uh, the thirteenth, right? You got to go back down there and you'll just rinse and repeat and do it again. Uh, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> no, they're doing it all at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. You trip me up there because I don't know if they. I, I don't know what. Sometimes I don't read things. Here we go, fine again, getting us all in the hot seat. Past yeah, two days, I don't get in trouble. Oh boy, that's okay. Um, but <laughs> Shannon and Danielle. It's good. You did, just, you did just remind me to pack two shirts. Which thank you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> Shannon and Danielle are inserted to the second event. So, uh, what do you what do you think about uh, in, in, including a couple of the ladies in, into that? Oh, I think it's great. I think that I think they've earned it. I think they're tremendous bowlers. I think they're great for the game and uh, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, uh, what, what is the, the event is it's the low ball event, right? That's the low yeah. ball. Yeah. The clash. Yeah. Sure. They, they certainly deserve it. Yeah. Unfortunately, Bill can't uh, ask Shannon to carry him like usual at the Lucy doubles, but um, you're going to have to actually like, you know, knock down your own pins on this one, Billy. 
Yeah, but there there is ways that you can kind of you know finagle that. I can try to get her to you know maybe tie somebody if I need to. You know, whether the, the, there's ways around it. There's ways you can kind of partner up. You can collude if you need to. <laughs> yeah, and then they announced the the king of the lanes as well. Um, I talked to Coley and Tom a little bit about that yesterday. What do you think about that event coming back? Uh, that'll be cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, that was like two, maybe ten years ago. We did that at Kegel where West Malott won. I think that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Uh, I'm not too up on all the details uh, of it. You, you, as you can tell, usually what I do is I just show up to an event and then I just see what it is and then I bowl. So I don't typically have too much info before I before I go. I probably should, uh, but you know, like when I walk into the even on a, a, the tour stop, we'll be in practice and I'll ask somebody, "Hey, what's the uh, what's the format?" I don't know. We bowl match play. It's like a long one. What is this? This is a true story. This just happened this year. Um, what was the tournament that you led and lost to Prey there? Oh, the, uh, yeah, tournament of champions. Yeah. yeah, tournament champions. Sorry. Uh, so tournament champions, and then uh, we had a ball video shoot the next day. Remember that? Yep. There was we. I we drove. Uh, so that was a yeah. That was a night show. On was it? It was a Sunday show, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we and it was that. It was like late afternoon or something, and then it was like snowing, uh, and we were in like uh, Akron and we had to drive to uh, Columbus a couple hour drive. And it's just like coming down. It took us forever to get to, to Columbus. And I had to be, you know, after being like, you know, a little miserable that I didn't win that tournament. I had to do uh, a, a ball video for the, for the redemption uh, solid and the redemption Pearl that like, you know, Mike scheduled me for like, I think it was like seven 30 in the morning. Uh, and we had to be at this bowling center and shoot this ball video and you know, Mike said, uh, oh, "I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you later on today." I said, "No, you won't." I said, "I'm going back to the, the house, and I'm gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna chill. I'm pretty tired." He's like, "Oh, you're not bowling practice?" I'm like, "Yeah, tomorrow I'll bowl practice." He's like, "Practice is today at one o'clock." Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought it was tomorrow. So yes, I'll see you at at one. And thanks for making me come here this morning to do this ball video because I. Mike, you have a you have a pretty you're catching a pretty bad rap here for ball video timing because didn't you also uh, schedule Shannon O'Keefe for a ball video shoot after right after she lost the major? Oh yes, I did, but uh, it was she if she'd have won the major, it wouldn't have been an issue. So right, that's well, not on I'm, me. I'm no, but I'm seeing a little bit of a jinx here. I'm just like trying to let everybody know. No, no, no. Bill there. won. Did Bill? Didn't she win the next week? I did with the with the ball we did the video with. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there you go. I don't really understand the issue here. There's another story about Mike doing ball videos. We uh, at the World Series last year in Detroit, we had to do, we had one day off. We bowled like all week, and then we had the World Championship um, match play, and it was Tom Doherty and I. And I made the show for the World Championship, and Tom bowled like 125 or something, like the second to last game of the tournament. So he was in the show the whole event and bowled a bad game in the second to last game and fell out of the show and had to come back the next morning to do a ball video. And to top it all off, Mike <laughs> screwed it up and had had people in it that he couldn't have in it, and we didn't even use the video. <laughs> so okay. I, was, I was happy. I was all right because I made the show. But Tom was miserable the whole time. <laughs> And then I believe that uh, Corey screwed something up. I don't think he hit record uh, on one of the parts we did, and we had to go back and reshoot it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was not a good one. Yeah. Uh, you see, everybody probably looks at you know Bill O'Neill, Mike Flanagan, big time people in the industry, and think that you guys got it all together. Bill O'Neill was about to forget to pack two shirts to go ball tournament, and Mike can't even get these video shoots straight. And, uh, and and I can't set one of these episodes up, right? I've been messing them up left and right the past couple of days. So uh, Yeah, well, before we went live here, you dropped your computer. Uh, no, I didn't drop it. It demolished itself off the stack of books that I have. My mic broke in half. My headset fell off. Uh, it's a real disaster over here lately. Yeah, we were like for, for like a minute, I was looking at like the dust underneath <laughs> your... Underneath it's dog your... hair. It's dog hair. Yeah. It's not dust. It's dog hair. So let's uh, let's talk about this PBA League uh draft i mean there was a lot of talk before it a lot of talk during it and a lot of talk after it and you got to be lucas's um uh color analyst so to speak and and you 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 torched a lot of guys we had big mike on uh on the show on monday he and uh brooklyn rob 
And uh, you said you listened to that show. You actually watched our show, so we yeah. appreciate that view there. Um, your thoughts on on your job that you did and, and what, what, what Mike had to say about you on Monday? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not trained for that in any way. I have no background in this stuff. Like, I just get on there, uh, you know, talk a little crap and get off. I, I don't, I don't, I, I didn't really I don't even know what I'm doing. So I just like get on there, and uh, it's it was difficult for me to do virtually because there was a little bit of a delay, and we tried to set it up to where you know Lucas always asked the first question and I would ask the second question, but like sometimes I would forget. And then I would want to follow up with something. And then Lucas is talking because he thinks I'm done, which I should be done. And I just keep going. And then other people come up and I don't have really have a question for certain people. And I'm not, I, you know, I just, uh, you know, there's 26 people that got drafted. I don't know all of them well enough to have like a real question. So then I just add, say something dumb, you know, and I'm just, I'm on there rambling. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Were, and, you, were, uh, you, uh, were you given a limit as to like how much of a jab you can throw at people to keep it somewhat re like somewhat of a professional draft? Well, no, Matt, but I am professional. I'm not going to like talk about no. like, mother. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking because I know that Bill O'Neill's by far the wittiest man on the PBA tour. And if you wanted to, you could have, you could have really thrown some jabs at people and made some people laugh. But I wanted to know if you were given some guidelines and if you were, if you were putting, put inside and confined a little bit and, and what you could say. No, listen, when they ask me to come on and do a show, they know what they're getting. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it. they're getting. Were there any comments at all during the show that you'd like to take back? Uh, yeah, I didn't have a follow up for Simonelli, so I asked him about his forearms. I probably wouldn't have done that if I had to do back, go back again. Um, hmm. Nothing about couch I would take back. That stuff was funny, and That's I would funny. do that again. I probably would double down. I probably would just, I probably do more because that made that made me laugh. I don't know if it made anybody else laugh, but comparing him to Michael Jordan, the player and the owner, that made me laugh. When I saw that joke, I giggled. I laughed quite a bit, and I, I'll tell you. Um, I think most people don't give you enough credit for being so good in that role. I know oh, that you, I know that you kind of just take it as, ah, they see what they're going to get. I have no training. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just do whatever. But you know what? It's like you introduced yourself today to Kevin Hart of bowling here. Yeah. You know, that's pretty, pretty high accolades there. Right? Oh, and to, get to, to get to big Mike, I'd like to address something that, that made me laugh about, about big Mike is that he, he said before, right before you guys started doing everything, that the draft was really overhyped. Everything about the draft, it was overhyped. Meanwhile, he was on doing mock drafts on other shows and then spent an hour on your show dissecting everything about the draft. What's well, overhyped? <laughs> you haven't shut up about it in a week. How could it possibly be overhyped? If it was overhyped, you wouldn't care and you wouldn't go on all these shows talking about it. Or at least he's one of the people overhyping it. Yeah, he overhyped it to himself, I guess. Yeah. I think he's just got this real big he's got this real big vengeance right now against these cornhole cornballers. I don't know if these cornhole cornballs is what he called them on the air. And I don't know if I don't know if you, you heard about that at all, Bill, but Big Mike's got this this big hatred for all these these uh, Twitter trolls that are that are cornhole people that are on talking about how much better cornhole is than bowling. Yeah, like he's first of all the, the total straw man argument. Who who said this? Who was like? Who are the people that are running around saying cornhole is better than bowling, or vice versa? How do they get intertwined? I don't understand. <laughs> and then he drags me into it. He tags me in this conversation. And now the, the cornhole podcast guy is now in my mention things. So I, so I muted the conversation, so I haven't seen anything. Because I didn't want to be bothered with the with the the uh, a made up cornhole bowling beef. Well, that's yeah. big Mike for you. What right are we doing? Makes sense. Hey, uh, hey Bill, you have a beef with somebody. Let can we can we can we shoot for the stars a little bit? Why are we why are we punching down? <laughs> can we at least go bass fishing or something? Something, something that people are, <laughs> know more than bowling. I think we've given sweep the rack enough credit this week. Um, so let's let's change the subject and. Uh, okay. I think we should introduce our next guest onto the oh, show. Oh. And look here, there's Mike in the in the chat saying saying guilty. And it's the best part about Mike. Look at his picture. It doesn't have one. It's like his Twitter profile. He goes on Facebook and he comments on things as his wife. You know? What's he doing? 
Oh, that's awesome. Bill, you want to introduce our, our the main guest of today, the big attraction? Yeah, come on up here, bud. Okay. We got uh, we got uh, number. What do we got there today? N number number six from the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. That is uh, who's that? Who's on your jersey? Doctor Julius Irving. Yeah, All right, you got. It? Listen, you got to do me a favor. I know you're, I know. and I know you're uh, super impatient, and you have a little bit of ADD. You have don't swivel in the chair the whole time. So can we okay. just can we just sit still? I say sit still. 50 times a day, at least, to, to the two kids. <laughs> Story of my life as a kid. Yeah. Story of my life. Sit still and be careful. Okay, so we're uh, we're really excited to have you on the show today, Gavin. Thanks for making some time for us today. We know you have a really busy schedule. Uh, what do you uh, what do you what do you do all day? What have you been doing a lot of? School. School and with my friends. Playing with some friends, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we been playing? Do we play any? Uh, we been playing any games? What have we been playing? Battleship. Well, like a month or two ago. Oh, so uh, we played Battleship a month or two ago. <laughs> oh, nice. if, if we ask, if we ask Gavin, I I beat him once. I do nothing for him or with him if you ask him. <laughs> okay. So everything probably happened in his world two months ago. We played Battleship two months ago. I probably made him lunch two months ago. You know, I don't do anything. I don't. I do nothing for him. Okay. Well, I got a couple questions for you guys. Um, so the first question I have for for you guys is: Do you do you guys play video games yet, or anything like that? What's going on in the video game world in your household? Tell them. What are we playing? Two K twenty. Do you guys play against each other or online, or what do you do? Sometimes we play up against each other. Do you who guys wins? have to? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, who who wins? <laughs> does he does he actually beat you? Sometimes, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm terrible at video games. I'm terrible. It's so bad. That's why I don't play video games. Because I'm so bad. And I'm great. I, I look. I I love the confidence yeah. here. I'm loving it. And uh, yeah, he likes to play on the 2K. We play the uh, like the playground games uh, okay sometimes we'll do the two on two against each uh, with each other and sometimes against each other awesome. but then when we do with each other he always wants to be the guard and i have to be a center and he never <laughs> passed the ball he just fired three. that's, that's like being a lineman in madden like why yeah. yeah i'm supposed to clean up the rebounds and he gets mad at me if i don't get the rebounds and he just fires three <laughs> gavin who if you're going to the playground right you you've got your my player yeah, who, who did you who did you build your my player off of? Like who inspired your my player? Well, you built two, right? Yeah. You have two different guys. Who's the the one now? You got you're on the Pistons, right? Yeah. And who's that guy? Um, Che. Well, what's his what's oh. his uh what's his like? How tall is he? How big is he? Uh, seven foot and two hundred and sixty pounds. <laughs> a defense guy and a rebounding guy. I love that. I love that. And do you, and you said the other guy you like to you like to have a point guard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so. he, likes to be, he likes the he likes the shooting guards. He likes to be a uh... because I'm splash splash. <laughs> splash. <laughs> Did he just do the mellow three? Yeah. Did he just do the mellow three? Yeah, we did the mellow. I love it. So, <laughs> Gavin, who's in your opinion, Gavin, who's a better shooter, Clay Thompson or Steph Curry? Uh, Clay Thompson. I love it. I, I I'm a fan of Clay. Clay looks so smooth when he shoots that jumper. That's how when we when we practice outside, we got a hoop in the driveway, and he's always goofing off and shooting. And I try to get him to shoot like Clay, get to get his shoulders square, right? Yeah. Boom! Just like that. Just like okay, that. I got to fire in with a question here. Uh, you guys are both big 76ers fans, right? Both of you. That's your number one team. Is that yep. right? Okay. So, a uh, question for both of you. Uh, we'll start with Gavin. Gavin, if the Sixers could get any other player in the NBA to join the Sixers, who would you like to see join the Sixers? Mm. I was thinking about Giannis, but we won't ever get him. But uh, Malcolm Brogdon. Oh, that's a if if you want to show that you have basketball knowledge, I'm impressed. You know, yeah, that we've actually never talked about Malcolm Brogdon, but Malcolm Brogdon would be a he's, nice fit because because why? Why would Malcolm Brogdon be a nice fit with the Sixers? 
I mean, he's a good shooter, kind of like Josh Richardson, but that's the person he, we would have to give up. No. Oh. I think the Sixers have the future front office coordinator here in Gavin because he knows his stuff. Yeah, a better version of Josh Richardson. I think that's what he said. I think he might be right. What what I can't believe here is that I basically gave him carte blanche, and 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 he could have just said, "Oh, I'd like to have Giannis or Trey Young or or Luca or whoever to build the franchise around in the future." But instead, he goes, "Well, we won't ever get Giannis. That's just not going to happen." Yeah. So I'm going to be a realist here. That's yeah. amazing. He was going over the trade scenarios. You were only asking him. What player would you like to take from another team and put on the Sixers? He had to come up with a trade that was yeah. realistic. You know, he wasn't going to – because he said – you said Luca, and he said, well, we would have to give up Ben. That's what <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see, how, let's see how Bill would answer the question and see if he gets all analytical here or if he just names a player. Well, well if, we're just, if, we're, if I could just take a player, the, the Clay Thompson's the player that I would take. But it's not realistic. If I'm being realistic, uh, and this is the person I keep teasing PJ Haggerty about because he's a big Kings fan. But my hope is that when the offseason, we, we somehow work out a, a Al Horford for Buddy Heald type of a uh, situation. Uh, uh, I thought you were going to take either Malcolm Brogdon or Bogdan Bogdanovich. But Bogdan Bogdanovich would be good too. But that's uh, he's that's, young. that's Mike's guy. Huh. Or no, wait, which one's which one's in the Jazz? Bojan or Bogdan? I always forget. Bogdan. Bojan. Bogdan. Right. Okay. Well, he just got hurt. So, yeah. Yeah. Wrist, wrist, wrist surgery. So, so yeah, I do want to follow up with a jazz question. Um, Gavin, what do you think the chances are when the NBA resumes? Uh, how far can the jazz go in the playoffs? Uh, if you could break that down for us, our weaknesses and maybe how good we are. I think they'll uh, get eliminated in the second round in six games. And, and why? Well, is that? Um, I, they're a good team, but I just think not good enough to like make go out and fight the better team, better teams. Who would they? Who do you think they would lose to? Um, maybe like the Rockets. Hmm. Yeah, we lost to them last time. Who, who's the Jazz best best player? Is there anybody on the Jazz that impresses you? Or are they all garbage? Well, there's three choices. Hmm. Uh, that, I think Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, Gavin, do you know the starting roster for every single team? Because I'm I'm scarily impressed by the basketball knowledge here. Diehard New York Knicks fan. What do you say? Ask it. Well, ask him. A ask. Just pick a team and see if. All, see, see all right. Um. Sh the the Charlotte Hornets. Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier. Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, and Cody Zeller. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this kid needs his own show. It's good, man. It's all good. right. Let's do let's let's do another one here. Um all right, what about um I'm gonna try to go go a little outside here, a team that maybe people don't really think about often. What about what about the Detroit Pistons? Uh, but, well, if Blake wasn't injured, he would be in the starting lineup. But okay, we'll we'll say we'll say healthy, right? A normal healthy lineup. Uh, Blake Griffin. I mean, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Derek Rose, point guard, shooting guard Luke Kennard, small forward. Uh, they don't really have a good small forward. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't. They definitely don't. They just traded their whole team away, didn't they? Didn't they get rid of uh, Drummond and? Uh... Yeah, yeah, that was before. Uh, this, is a, this is a difficult question. I know. That's why I'm, mean, I'm, I'm putting. But he he knows three out of the five, four out of the five. I don't know. I yeah. mean, on my my career mode, there's this guy named Andrew Murray, so I'm just gonna throw him in there. <laughs> yeah, I just throw him in. Andrew Murray, Blake Griffin, and Christian Wood. Dude, I love this. Now, Gavin, last last question for you. Come for me, and then I'll shut up. But I'm a New York Knicks fan, Gavin. What do we have to do to be a good basketball team? Uh, maybe. I mean, maybe try to get rid of some old guys and return for some young guys, and then get the future. 
and then give up maybe Randall for like a star, maybe a superstar. I I'm clipping this and I'm sending it directly to the New York Knicks front office after the show is over because if that's not the most convincing argument I've ever heard, then I don't know what is. Well, if you notice, there was a long pause there in the beginning. <laughs> so many thoughts. No one knows what to do with the New York. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, I got to really think about this. Oh, I love it. <laughs> have you have you two? Um, I, I would assume no. Maybe this is a sore subject now that I think about the rating here. Have you guys been watching a series on Sunday night, or how does that work? Is that Gavin worthy, or do we DVR that for in about five years? Yeah, no. He he's watched the talking about the Jordan uh, documentary, but you know he's seven, so the documentary thing is not really his speed right now. Sitting mm-hmm. around listening to the stories, so he, he he checks in on the. Uh, on, the, on the action, watch the game. yeah, the action. Uh-huh. Uh, he, uh, well, and when he when he comes when he comes down to watch the to to watch it, I'll put on ESPN two. They have the uh, the censored one. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. so I'll, we'll so we'll we'll watch that one. Cool. Um, Bill, uh, would you like to ask Gavin a couple of questions? Since obviously you know him a little bit better than we do in regards to the NBA, you know his inside knowledge a little bit better than us, and could probably do a better job reporting on the ground there as we have him on the show. Oh, Gav, what do you think? Uh, you know, we watch all the Sixers games. Um, what does what does Ben Simmons have to do to become a better player? I mean, probably keep practicing his free throws. And probably try to work on his threes and just try to drive to the basket and not just be scared of getting blocked. That's it. I love it. Mm-hmm. What about what about Embiid? Embiid. Also, he might need to practice his threes. Threes, yep. Yeah. Then yeah. mm-hmm. his free throws like Ben too. Well his free throws are pretty good, but yeah, sure. And there's nothing else because he just Dominant. And that's why he's my son. <laughs> he needs to stay healthy too, right? Yeah, but we can't control that, right? You know, lose a little bit of weight or something. I got injured two yeah. times in my actual games when I played. Oh, you were fine. Yeah, you got hurt a little bit. He had a little jam finger action, right? Mm. Um, I was going up for a rebound on two people, and I almost got, it and then I jammed my finger. I'd get out of the game for one quarter. Oh, Gavin, do you so think you're ever going to dunk on someone? He knows, he knows how it feels to be injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gavin, Gavin, when, uh, Betty, let me revise that question. Um, how far away are you from dunking on dad? Uh, I've already done that down here. Uh, we have a uh, – it's kind of broken because he's dunked on it so much, but there's a uh, there's a hoop right there you can see that we we raise up from time to time. But it's if you see the rim, it is just <laughs> it's of all the all, all the, the all the dunking. So, but yeah, he's uh, he's uh, the, yeah. The, the, this is this is what we this is what, all day. Oh, so sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's outside. So it's just all day. So that's, okay, he's a bucket getter, Bill. Yeah, that's what we do. And if you like, so just to see as a proud dad, okay, his his favorite player is Joel Embiid currently, right? It's the first guy that he like loved in basketball, and so now he's wearing a Dr. J jersey, which is basically my Joel Embiid for him. You know what I mean? So now I get to be a a, a dad who is basically influencing his son with all of his decisions. Uh, and it brings it brings a tear to my eye that he can. He's got a Dr. J jersey on, which is which is my Joel and B, you know, for when I was a kid, right? Yeah, back in yeah. Uh, probably 1976. 76? How old? I'm not that old. <laughs> back in 76, Dr. J played basketball with Moses. <laughs> He's schooling you, Bill. He came over on the ark with him. Yeah. 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 I love it. Who did he play for before the Sixers? Uh, um, New Jersey Nets. The Nets. Wow, this is great. Uh, let's can we talk a little bowling for a second? Yeah. With Gavin, I, I was just recently restreaming some of the uh, PBA league from last year and noticed that Gavin was uh, made a cameo appearance uh, down on the lanes with the Dallas Strikers. What was that like for you, Gavin? Uh, it felt amazing. 
<laughs> I got the high five the players like uh there's like the fan that I, I saw but I probably wouldn't wouldn't be allowed to touch it. I don't remember. Oh, you know who uh uh chimed in is watching is AJ Johnson. Oh. Who you told me who you told me right before we came on that the three players that he wants to uh, FaceTime because he wants to talk to them are Belmo, Tommy Jones, and AJ, mm -hmm. right? And AJ, uh, and, so who did AJ bring that you had fun with? Uh, was it Gage? No, Gage, Gage is Mark Baker's son. Oh. Mason. Oh, yeah. yeah, you guys played around. Gage and Mason. Yeah. You guys had fun. Mm -hmm. I just wish we could go back. I know. Name. I know. Yeah. Summed up my, my my thoughts as well. You gonna bring Gav back next time? You think? Yeah, I mean, whenever whenever we can go back up there. Yeah, we usually go up there and make it like a little trip. It's a really nice place, Portland, Maine, especially in the summertime. So we can get up yeah, there and, to Maine, Florida, and Wildwood every summer. It's well, that's not every summer. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do. We we do go to the Jersey Shore every summer. Not this one, but. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got another question for Gavin. Gavin, with uh, with what we've been dealing with in the world here recently, your dad's been home an awful lot lately. What's that been like for you? Um, great. But well, what's it like to have have dad home so much? Um, really good. I get to I get to find to play with him a little bit since we can't go possibly anywhere. Um, so I can just stay home and relax. <laughs> relax, yeah. And watch some movies. Watch some, yeah. Eat some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> and play Battleship two months ago. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, is there any, any parting words you, you have for us, Gavin? Um, our time, I know your time is precious and you've got things to do like relax. Uh, any, yeah. anything, anything you wanted to tell the, the viewers at home? Uh, that's really important to you? Um, I mean, stay safe and keep doing what you're doing. Oh, my man. Good, wow. good work right there. I'm just going to go over there and play some basketball. Sounds good. All right. Thanks uh, Thanks for the time there. Yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll send you an invoice. Yeah, I know he will. I know he will. Yeah, he learns from his dad. Just packing on to the, to the – right, No previews around here. The sign charge up there, just tack it on to that invoice that you're going to send me for the sign right above you. That's right. Hey, I'm still I'm still on here, Chris, so quit yelling. You can play, but you got to be quiet. Bill, what's the, what's the household like around there? Obviously, you got Gavin and, and Christy and, and, and your daughter, and I mean, you got all kinds of stuff going on around there. It's insane. That's it. It's, it's nuts. <laughs> Christy, it's tough because Christy, Christy is working a lot. Christy uh, teaches first grade, and so she's like busier now than she was, you know, before. So trying to relearn how to teach and everything, and do all those things online, and um, be quiet. <laughs> uh, this is all. It's all day. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it really is crazy because like, so like I have, you know, I am have the kids, you know, for most of the morning she has to do Zooms with her class. And then when she's done, she has to prepare for the next day and the next week. And she's just like constantly working. And so, um, you know, Gavin has his own schoolwork that he has to do online. So I help him out with um, stuff in the morning and, uh, you know, the, the, the kids are having a hard time with it because it's just the monotony of it is is, is killing them because they just, they want to go out. They want to, they want to run around and play and um, they want to meet up with their friends at places that, you know, trampoline parks and, you know, go swimming and do whatever, do all these things. And they're just confined to the, the house mostly. And, uh, and it wears on them. So uh, the in turn, it wears on, it wears, it wears on us. And then I yell at them for things that wouldn't normally bother me, like him running behind me. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool. I'm glad Gavin was able to join us. And I think you're doing a great job as a dad. I keep ribs on things and, and I know you got to be loving uh, having a son like Gavin who has the same interest as you because 
it all doesn't always work out that way, brother. Yeah, it's you know it's 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 tough because as a as someone who traveled doing clinics and doing youth events, I got to kind of see a lot before I had kids, like father son, you know, father mother daughter interactions, and and like how I didn't what I didn't want to do with my kids, you know, off of other people, and I saw these, I saw a lot of people that would like constantly be harping on their kids while they're bowling, and you could just tell that they didn't want to be there. You know, and like, and I was like, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that with my kids. I'm just not, if, if he shows interest, I'm all in. We'll do everything together. Um, and, and then I would notice that like all of the kids who were really good, their parents would just sit back. They would sit and they weren't even in like the first row of seats. They were always in like the second, third row of seats and they would be in the back and they just would let them, they do. So that's what I'm going to do. And like, he just, you know, I watched a lot of basketball when he was younger um, but I didn't like force him to like sit there and watch it with me and play. And I just let him figure it, you know, figure out what he likes on his own. And I, I don't watch soccer or play soccer at all. But if he told me tomorrow we go, we want to play soccer with, you know, I buy a net and we play soccer. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, we've got, uh, we've got a little bit of time left here on the program. Uh, and we were talking a little bit about, uh, your opinions and you, um, uh, you and I were discussing maybe a rapid fire segment here where uh, Matt and I could go back and forth and name a, name a bowler. And uh, you could basically tell us why they aren't better than they actually should be. Yeah. This is a segment that's going to get me in trouble in my own house uh, because Christy wasn't a fan of this when I brought it up. Uh, she doesn't like me talking negative about anybody in any form of life. So she's, uh, she's, but let's have some fun. What the hell? Okay. Do you want do you, Mike? Mike, I've got this graphic here from the from the draft, the picks. Or do you want to pick mm. this up so we can run through maybe the people that are in the PBA league? I think it'd be a good idea just to have a, a have it up on the screen as people that you and I could pick in case we forget a name. So uh, would you like to start? Here. Would you like to start first, Matt, or would you like me to fire off? No, you go. You go ahead and you fire off, fire off. Now, look, I may I may not have an opinion on everybody. Some some people just may be exactly what they are. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I, I think we can set you up for success here, Bill. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to give you like. Yeah, you, have to give, you want me to give like a one sentence thing, or can I elaborate? As as far as you want to go, I'm gonna, I'm going to give you a nice one right up on the tee right here. You ready? Yeah. Andrew Anderson. Andrew, too particular about feel. Uh, yeah, that's it. He's just too particular about his feel. He's good. Just All needs right. to. Next, next person, uh, someone that's in the chat, absolutely, AJ Johnson. Oh, just cares way too much about what other people think. And if he stopped doing that, he'd be better. Boom, Mike. Sean Maldonado. Uh, needs a little more versatility. A little bit too, a little bit too uh, one dimensional on how he likes to play the lanes. Jason Sterner. Um, same answer. He's a little more variety in his ball roll. I'm going to go for the three-peat then, DJ Archer. Um, I think I think DJ is is exactly what he is. I think his A game is, is strong and it's good, and when it's there, he strikes. Um, but because of the way he throws it, it's hard for him to get his hand and his body into different into different spots. All right, I'm going to go a different direction with this one. Jason Belmonte. Uh, too big of an ego. <laughs> <laughs> Just to remind everybody, Jason once said to you, "Man, Bill, or I'm paraphrasing here. I wish I could. I wish I could wake up as you one day so I could just watch myself bowl." Yes, which was funny at the time until I realized that that is, in fact, a stolen Kanye West quote um, that he repurposed as his own. Um, and now he's buying every shoe that Kanye puts out. So basically, he's just a he just listens to whatever Kanye says. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. All right. My turn. Uh, Anthony Simonson. Oh, that's a tough one. His temper. His bowling, bowling game isn't anything. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about this? Uh, close close partners of of inside bowling, uh, Brad and Kyle. 
Uh, Brad, his physical tools are there. He uh, he worries too much at the end of events. He gets too nervous. He doesn't just focus in on the on the task, and he gets himself too. Uh, he starts bowling different towards the end of the tournament. And Kyle, Kyle, um, he needs a couple more tricks. His A game is really good. He needs a couple more tricks. All right, let's uh, let's keep it in the house. Nick Pate. Nick Pate. Well, he roasted me on the draft to my face. That was a tough one. I didn't know how to handle that. That wasn't prepared for it because I didn't know him as much of a, a jokester like that. Nick Pate. Uh, experience, which isn't really a flaw, just is what it is. And um, yeah, he just needs to add more things. Okay, we'll do one more each. How about that? One more each. Yeah, uh, shoot, I forgot who I was going to say, Mike. So if you have another one, I, I, I had a good idea here in head, but uh, I forgot about it. So if you have another person, you can fire right away again. Mm, let's go with uh, Tom Doherty. Tom Doherty. Um, tough because his game is what it is. Too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not being mean. I'm. I'm. I'm just saying it would help. <laughs> it would help a lot of us. Yeah, it's true. Matt, All right. um, let's let's wrap it up here. I'm just looking at this list, seeing if anybody here's here's an interesting one. Chris Vi. Chris Vi. Uh, when he's not bowling good, he's really out of balance. Man, so if he needs to fo like work on his, um, looks like he's always slipping. I don't know what I don't know the the proper terminology for and improve that, but he's uh, he's always looks like he's slipping. Awesome. Check this out, Co Corey checking in. Bowling's number one fan. Corey checking in. Hi, Corey. I'm actually I'm, I'm surprised you didn't make me flip this on myself. Yeah. <laughs> No, we we all know that you think you're perfect, so it's it's that would have been you know just like a. That's the impression you get from me. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's the impression. I mean, uh, I don't know. Some people may follow you on Twitter and get the get that kind of impression here. Well, since you served this one up, Bill. Yeah, oh, speaking, speaking of the picture that you referenced earlier, if you think I think I'm perfect, I'm the one who posted the picture of me just out of college. <laughs> Bill, how, how much did you weigh back then? I don't know. When you see the thing is when you get to a point where you're that heavy, you don't weigh yourself. Mm. And was it just yeah. a gradual process of losing weight, or was it just like you were you came to a point where you're just like, I can't, I can't do this? Oh, I've done I've done this like my entire life. So I was heavy like that when I was like early high school. Then I lost weight uh, like my senior year. Then I went away to school, to college, and that did it. So I, you know, you get the freedom, you start learning about drinking, and you're at college, and you're away, and you never go home, and you have a, you know, a meal card, uh, and things took a turn for the worse. And my metabolism, uh, I, you know, I don't have the greatest genetics for that, so I wasn't able to just like stem the tide there while I was in school. So when I got out, it was, it was no good. So I've gone, I've gone, you know, and now I'm kind of the last like probably three or four years. I've kind of been in the same, the same boat and I'm trying to use this time actually now to try to relearn how to eat and stuff. Cause the road's hard. It's, it's really difficult to be on the road and to be on the road that much. And, uh, you know, especially when you're younger and, and you don't have money to, to eat at place. Cause sometimes eating healthy on the road is really, really expensive. So even something like going to Panera Bread may cost you 15 bucks for a lunch. And, you know, you're younger on tour. You're just trying to survive. You don't – you can't afford that. And you're eating things that you shouldn't be eating because that's the only thing you can – only thing you can afford. Bill, uh, final thing for you here. Um, obviously, you're a smart guy and you're entertaining and you've been on every show in the world and it's like every day you got to fire this thing up, right? You ever thought about doing something on your own? a uh, podcast, uh, a small video vlog of some sort. Um, I know you're busy and I know you got to focus on bowling 
and you've got a lot of commitments with your sponsors. And then of course, family life, when you're home, you want to be home with, with your kids and family. I completely understand that, but you're really good at this type of stuff. And any thoughts on this in the future? And is there any way we can help? So this is a, I, this might be a long answer. So I know like Belmo and I have talked about uh, podcasts for a long time. We just haven't pulled the trigger on it. And partly because when we're not on tour, we're so far away. It's time wise. It's a difficult thing to, to put together. And also I've said this to uh, a few people. And part of the reason why I'm not, I'm not good at like social media and I haven't really dove headfirst. It's not because I'm like given this old guy take of uh, social media, but I find myself to be very, very different than most of the people that bowl or enjoy bowling. So I, I find that some of the stuff that people do not to be entertaining and, but they are successful with it. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know what people really would be looking for or what they're into that would also entertain me at the same time. Like, I don't want to do simple stuff like and get it, you know, and just do like, Oh, where's everybody bowling that this weekend? Like, I'm not, doing this. Like, <laughs> like, I, like, I'm, I don't want to do, I don't want to do simple things for like, you know, shares and likes and stuff and just have a million comments about just something cheap like that. Like, a, you know, and like, I, I, so I don't really know how I would, how I would format some sort of video thing um, to, to, to put online. And um, also after that really long winded answer, uh, the main reason is I just, I don't want to work at it. Makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> I just, don't, I just, I don't want to put the extra effort. in. <laughs> what Brad and Kyle do, is that exhausting to you? Uh, yeah. You know, because it's like, I think, you know, it might be a generational thing a little bit for me is that I don't, I don't ever like see something and be like, Oh, I should video this or take a picture of this, or it's just not something that enters my head. And so it's hard for me to even like enter their space because it's not something that I, I think about, you know, just like I watch them and I like, just for example, we, I think me and Belmo uh, popped on the one of the things where they were in the car and they were like, so I just wouldn't even think of like, Hey, just pull up to the bowling center. Let me video this and talk about, how we got here. I, I don't know. I don't know how it doesn't even, it's not something I think about. And it's not like a knock on them. Cause I wish I, I wish I had a little bit of that. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if it affects their, their bowling um, or what, but they, you know, they've certainly gotten a lot better over the last like two or three years, each of them in their own right. So I don't know if they, if it, if it's helped them or they could be even better. I don't, I don't know, but it's just, it, it's a hard thing for me to, Thing. I, I see, you know, because I see all the work that Belmo does, and he does a lot. He's always on the phone talking to this person and that person and setting this up. And, like, I hope he's – I'm not jealous of him in any way because I hope he's as successful as any one person could be at this. I think he's great for the sport. And I look at him do all this stuff, and the first thing that enters my head is, that seems exhausting. I don't want to do that. And <laughs> it might be, like, a lazy thing, but it's just like, man, that seems like a lot of – uh, a lot of stuff to do and he's able to manage it and still bowl as well as he does and, and do all of that at the same, same time. And I'm not sure that uh, I would have that, that same type of success um, because he's just, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not as talented as he is. So he can kind of just show up and show up 10 minutes before we bowl. Cause he's been on the phone or doing, doing whatever interview or setting up whatever. And, uh, yeah, so that's my really long answer on that. Well, the biggest reason why I bring it up. We've talked about this a lot. Yeah, the, the biggest reason why I bring it up is you don't tell people no. You're on every you said you're on 720 shows and you've you've put a lot of time into other people's shows and they they ask you to come on, you always say sure, you're very accessible. You'll do a ball video shoot in between in between the practice session and a TV final, right? You you're just a nice guy. And then when you do show up for it, you know, you put your game face on, you do an excellent job. Do you know how many people owe you? uh interviews on your own show with all the help you've given everybody uh so if there's any way we can help you bill if it's just the whole tech side of this and you don't want to mess with that stuff but you'd like to do your own show shoot us a message offline all right cool yeah and I, uh yeah i do have a bank of stored of stored uh appearances for for my own show but 
I don't want I don't want this to you know you get confused at all. At the at the core of me, I'm a little bit of a a businessman. So I understand that while I'm doing these these interviews and I'm doing all of these these ball videos, there's a, a deeper purpose to that. Uh, and you know, I have sponsors, and I'm going to keep try to keep them as happy as possible, whether we're on the lanes or or off. And and uh, you know, maybe maybe down the road, maybe that's something that the you know, maybe Hammer Brunswick, maybe they say, hey, we need you to get into this uh, in this space, and maybe they force my hand, and then I come calling, and I give you, you know, one to two percent of whatever I bring in. There you go. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, Bill, thanks for joining us today. This is a very laid back show, and we knew that it would be really cool to have Gavin on and yeah. see the relationship that you have there. Yeah, it was awesome. I love uh, I love doing anything like this with him. He he really enjoyed it. As soon as I told him today, like, hey, they want to talk basketball on this uh, show today. You want to do it? He's like, yeah, come in. So, uh, yeah, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a I'm a family man. I love my kids. I love my wife, and uh, you know, um, I'm proud of them and. Uh, it's cool that he was that, uh, that he was able to come on here and not just uh, not be super shy because that's always a it's always a you know a struggle with the kid that's at, at that age you never know what they're gonna do. Yeah, July twenty first. I'm gonna call you and make Gavin get on the phone and I'm gonna say, remember two months ago when we talked? Yeah, two months ago. What has your father done with you since then? And he's gonna be, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe we played one game of Uno. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Bill, thanks for the time today, brother. Uh, we're going to let you get out of here. We'll wrap Yeah, up appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Of course, thanks, man. Bill. Thanks, buddy. And th yeah, thanks for not making this the same as every other interview. I appreciate yes, it. That is our goal. Yes. All right. Take care, bud. All right. I'll text you about your, your Team USA jerseys and medals mm, later. All right. Well, I th I appreciate you saving that for private space <laughs> and not, uh, not destroying me in a public domain. See you, you later, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bill's a special person. He's a special someone, boy, that guy. Love, I gotta say, man, not even just bowling Billy to side. Uh, Bill's my favorite guy on tour just because he's such, he's just a regular dude, you know? He's just a cool, regular dude. He's into hip hop music. We didn't even talk about that. He loves basketball. He loves other sports. He's so down to earth. He's a family guy. And it's, um, it's always a pleasure to just hang out with Bill and talk to him and just, uh, just hang out. Yeah, and this week we had Guppy and Kyle Troop on, father-son duo. And, you know, Kevin throws the rock around a little bit, too. He loves basketball, but he also does love bowling. Uh, we just know that he's got ridiculous basketball knowledge, and that's why we wanted to do that today. So, And he says the Utah Jazz are going to lose in the second round whenever the NBA resumes, probably to the Houston Rockets. So I'll make sure uh, with my season tickets that I, I figure that out and plan accordingly uh, with the Jazz organization and – it was just a fun show today. So, and uh, you never know what you're going to get here. And that's kind of how we wanted to take today's show. Bill's been on a lot of shows and we wanted to give him an opportunity to just come on and we just kind of kick it a little bit. So if you like the format, you can email us at media at insidebowling.com. If you hated today's show, let us know that as well. We'd certainly appreciate that. Tomorrow, Matt, we're going to have Amletto Monticelli and Bob Learn on. And we will be on one hour earlier tomorrow as I am on the USBC show tomorrow with Dave Husted, Mike Albee, Chad Murphy, and John Mark Manzione. So make sure you check that out after, after the show tomorrow. You've got a big day tomorrow, Mike. You've got a lot of legends uh, on your plate for tomorrow. So no pressure or anything, but tomorrow's, tomorrow's a big day for you. Yeah, we've had a big week here at Inside Bowling. We launched another Mike Shady coaching video on Wednesday. Make sure you go check that one out on our YouTube channel or over on Facebook. And then yesterday afternoon, I had an awesome interview and, and time, and I appreciate you producing the interview with uh, Coley Edison and Tom Clark discussing the uh, the big press release yesterday and the events that are coming up uh, on Fox. So uh, go check that out if you, if you haven't. And tomorrow we're going to finish it out, finish out the week. And we also got confirmed Pete Weber on Monday. So, uh, Ooh, big time. And I'm working on Legends Week. I'm trying to bring Legends on next week, but we'll keep we'll keep efforting over there. And uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Any uh, final uh, thoughts there, Matt? No, another great show in the books, Mike. Looking forward to another great episode tomorrow. Yep. All right. Well, uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we'll see you tomorrow on Friday. <laughs>